welcome you all back to Think Tech Hawaii. Checking on if paradise continues to be paradise as far as the balance of the natural and the built environment. And today is going to be a special event again with a very special guest. And we're just actually staying in the hood. And the hood is basically uh, where we are natives of, mm -hmm. uh, some mm -hmm. less, some more. <laughs> yes. And so uh, this is, these are the boys from the hood here. Yep. And so we have uh, DeSoto Brown and we have Ron Lindgren. And we're all Waikikians in different ways. And True. if we can get the first picture up here, um, we... You guys, if you guys go, please, uh, on the web and you Google an interview with the uh, one and only uh, Edward Killingsworth, interviewed by Harvey Keller, on uh, minute two of approximately an hour, you will actually hear um, Ed talking about the previous show's project, which is the former Seaside Hotel, mm -hmm. no shoreline or whatever, mm -hmm. we don't mind, we don't care. Not mind. But uh, so... Um, Right after that, he points out to the project we want to talk about today, and he says it is in the jungle. So I will leave it to the two other guys from the block here to talk about that okay. hood and in the jungle. And just one little editorial uh, comment at the top right, we've been using uh, automobiles mm -hmm. or means of transportation Correct. as vehicles for thought, yes. and we will continue to do that. As we go through this. However, from the picture two on, we have for a certain reason chosen yeah. the automotive brand of DeSoto. Yes, we have. Because DeSoto is going to start out to talk about what's his relationship to our hood. And if we can get the p camera back to studio for one more second here, um, I just bought this here from a uh, postcard stand, and we're going to be in Waikiki, and we're going to be particularly here in this very corner. Correct. But let's kick off and go back to slide number one, and you tell us about that history of okay. that place. Well, we're looking at Waikiki. Obviously, everybody can see Diamond Head in the background. What Ron was commenting on, that he didn't realize how much of a marshland or how much wetland there had been in Waikiki. And in fact, Waikiki was. It's called Waikiki because that means spouting or bubbling water because there were freshwater springs there. Mm -hmm. and in the upper right corner, we see early transportation, a horse-drawn tram that plied the streets of Honolulu. Well, let's go to the next picture. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the Holly Kulani Hotel. And, yes, go ahead, Ron. And I have to jump, I have to jump in as an architect because this, this picture just blows me away. Uh, it shows uh, the local famous architect C.W. Dickey's absolute mastery of uh, residential tropical wooden architecture, and especially those famous Dickey roofs with their varied roof lines, those really widely extended eaves, and the signature double pitch, and it all goes together to make incredibly pleasing proportions. Yes, and these cottages were on the grounds of the Holly Kulani Hotel, and that's what we're talking about today. And, and this is from the 1920s, this is and from that's the why 1920s. I googled in 1920s to Soto, and there, and there it, is. it is. And there it is. So these are, when you went to the Holly Kulani Hotel for many, many years, up until about 1980, it was a group of cottages, mm -hmm. small buildings that looked residential, and that is something that's important that we're going to be coming back to. Going to the next photo, we see, again, more views of those cottages, uh, lots of palm trees. And so when you talk about the jungle, mm -hmm. there was some elements of the jungle there. Um, the Holly Kulani was particularly low rise and comfortable compared to the Moana Hotel and the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, which were the big hotels of that time, which looked grand. You had to be dressed up. This, again, looked more like you were on a family vacation, yeah. if you will. And once we go to the next slide, I want to ask you, because of course you know of all this because you're the historian, uh, but yeah. there is another more personal reason why you have these pictures and you know so well about it. Well, this is a picture of the main building at the Holy Kulani, which was constructed about 1930. And it also, even though it had the dining room and it had the check-in desk, it looks residential as well. Mm -hmm. This was where my mother and her family were staying on the morning of December 7th, 1941. My grandparents were in a room on the second floor of this building, and my mother and her brother were moved from another one of those cottages to be in this building so that they were all together in case there was another attack. Mm -hmm. That's why it meant a lot to yeah, yeah, my yeah. mother. 
Absolutely. who's still alive at the age of 99. Here we go. And she continues to look at this from her that's place right. further right. up the hill in the that's hood. Right. Right? That's right. Exactly right. That's right. So, so next picture. Here's the original dining room. And it has this very distinctive basalt lava rock walls uh, and arches, which were a feature of the building at the time that it was built. And we've talked about that in previous shows, the use of basalt lava mm -hmm. rock. The only thing that this did was it made the interior quite dark. Mm -hmm. So the outside was very bright and the inside was kind of dark and it made it sort of difficult during the day mm -hmm. when you were dining in there. Next picture. And this, and Ron, this is something that's near and dear to you too. The original lobby of the Halikulani in the building we've been talking about looks very much like a home. Mm -hmm. It looks like a grand home. It has a working fireplace, which you see in the, in the distance yeah. on the far wall. It's got this comfortable wicker and rattan furniture. It has elements of Hawaiian design in it. There are two paintings flanking the fireplace that are of surfers and a net fisherman. And it's got kapa mm -hmm. on the wall. Again, but very, very low key. Yeah. And I found, I was lucky to find a convertible DeSoto there. there we go. To do uh, justice to, and it gets us to the next picture, please, that this was a convertible room, right? Right. And this big, the big vista that you're looking through right there in this postcard from 1941 is where the steps are today to come into that lobby, which then you can turn to the left and go to the Orchids mm -hmm. restaurant. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a DeSoto up in the corner, too. Will be for a while. There we will. Different ones. That's right. As that's they right. evolved. Right. Next picture. Next picture. And there, in, again, in 1941, is the dining room in a color photograph. You're looking out, and you're seeing Diamond Head in the distance. And again, the very distinctive lava rock walls. And those walls are not visible anymore. But we are going to see that a lot of this original building was kept mm -hmm. when the building was remodeled, and Ron was deeply involved in that. Absolutely. Yeah, and that seems to be the place where I should jump in and introduce myself as the very lucky architect chosen to design the new Holly Kalani. And one of the blessings uh, that I had as the designer was the existence of this Lewis house. Yeah. We saved it. Uh, it was, again, a C.W. Dickey building, but this time it was in concrete, and the Dickey roof was framed up in steel. But what I found, it was so easy to take the existing building and its two two-story light wells and convert it into a, a place that would be restaurants and meeting rooms and uh, the public toilets and uh, making it the real central home in the new Halekalani. And it, very skillfully. And there's also a little club in there, too. There's a little bar. That's got jazz, jazz music, club, too. The Lure is yeah. Lounge. Yes, Lure is exactly. Lounge. Let's go to the next slide and indulge a little bit more in the history that you were building upon, Ron, so literally and figuratively. And this car here, I didn't have to put another one no. because that's so clear about because which Because there's a 1951 is, right? Buick parked okay, right in front more of it. Okay, a 50-ish, right? Yes, because now we're coming up into the 50s. Exactly. And then one more 50s here, or I think late 50s. Next slide here. Right. Um, is these marvelous sort of advertisement and postcards you always have in your treasure box. Yeah. And what gets me going as the more next generation Americano is the next one, <laughs> which I love the graphic arts and design right. from right. the 60s, That's as you right. can clearly tell by that. And this is about the time where they were discontinuing the DeSoto. Sorry for that. That's okay. Right? We got to live but, with but, that. But the, the sister or mother company Chrysler took, yes. so we're going to continue with Chrysler. Chrysler is right. But I love that, that card here that is dwelling upon actually um, uh, an element that has always been the character of the site. And thanks to you, Ron, continues even more is the natural environment right. being at least as important, if not more important, than the built yeah. environment. And, and, and that can, in, the, in the middle of what's actually a concrete jungle is oh, rather yeah. amazing. Yeah, and I also want to just point out, too, yeah, this, I, this I, is the logo type I'd that like the hotel still that, uses. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Ron. Yeah, when you look at that, uh, uh, that picture, you'll, you'll see that, there, that C. David Dickey actually provided 27 different cottages, almost all with different plants. And uh, they have one little error perhaps in that in near the seawall it says white sand beach and of course there never <laughs> was a white sand beach there 
Yeah, right. <laughs> There's just the seawall. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. That's right. And that's actually the 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 po photo the postcard here and the drawing, which I, I kept the original color of a uh, of a 1970s Chrysler here. This is Le, Le Baron, so they discontinued the Desoto, yeah, so we jump to the Le Barons now perfectly. as the followers. Okay. So this is typical color, the brownish, and that's typical for the 70s. And oh that's, yeah. That was the previous project, the seaside. So this is the 70s, and all the colleges cottages still there. And you were exchanging in an in a in an emotional discussion uh, prior about you know the the cottages sort of faith and maybe missed opportunities. You guys want to share a little bit? Well, Ron, you pointed out that uh, when the dem before the demolition and the clearing of the site happened, that uh, the hotel offered to let people take the Dickey cottages for free, and nobody took them up on it. And I'm not sure why that was, but it, I, I conjectured maybe because they had termites or maybe because it was just so logistically difficult to get them out into the streets of Waikiki and transport them somewhere else. But alas, they did not get kept. But you can see in this, in this site map, which was just something given to the guests, what the original layout of the hotel was and how much that got juggled when it got rebuilt. But I think very successfully yeah, juggled yeah. too. And it's from here on, move on to the next slide. And I want to pass on the baton to you, Ron Moore, here, because these, all these pictures, the previous ones were from the Soto's treasure box and obviously family archive and a combination of that. And here, these are the pictures that you have used and will continue to use. You have another presentation coming up. And this one was one that you gave as part of the Dokomomo National Symposium where you guys were both keynote speakers. And that was, is actually the beginning of your speech. So share with us, Ron, why this picture is so typical and representative for the beginning of your uh, endeavors um, in, into the redesigning the new Helakalani. Well, again, uh, this picture shows yet another blessing that I was given as a designer for the hotel because the site has these wonderful direct views of uh, Diamond Head Crater. And uh, we wanted to take advantage of that in every way that we could, because it was such a, a glorious sight in sunrise and sunset. So the next photograph actually shows one example of that same view from a sweet uh, lanai looking out again towards uh, Diamond Head. I would say that's a very sweet lanai. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lanai of a sweet and it's a sweet lanai. And let's move to the next slide and see what it sort of was picking up yeah. on, right? I mean, yeah. this was the inspiration. Yeah, what, the... I, I had stayed at the Holly Clowney uh, several times, even before I ever had the, an inkling that I might be involved in design efforts there. And this was a photograph I found of how residential this site has always been. Once Waikiki was sort of drained of its uh, marshes, I guess, Back in the Victorian era, all of a sudden, these private, beautiful wooden homes were showing up all over along uh, the beach at the site of the Holly Clinic. Then, uh, the, uh, then in 1917, the, uh, the Holly Clinic Hotel and Resort actually opened on that site. Uh, and that's, uh, uh, and then in 1931, in the next photograph, is when C.W. Dickey did come in and build 27 cottages and build that uh, glorious Lures house as well. So the hotel has always had the history of being a residential scale. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the urban Waikiki grew up around this place, and the Holly Colony became a really sweet and odd anomaly as a wooden village at the base of Sheraton's 30-story concrete mm -hmm. guest room tower. Yep. Yeah. Yes, exactly. exactly. And we're always seeding in now little pictures, little, as we call it, details or glimpses of the, of the design. And here is, again, the natural environment. Uh, the historic picture of the palm trees looks so nice and straight, while the ones on the right, the pictures we took when you toured me around your project, they're kind of so um, basically trade wind bent right why is that ron yes <laughs> yeah that was some of the the most fun i had uh the co contractors and landscape sub subcontractors went all over the island of oahu 
looking in people's backyards, buying large, mature cocoa ponds. <laughs> and they gave each uh, owner quite a nice sum for those. And then they were trucked down to the site. It was my job and the landscape architect's job when they put them into the ground to make sure that they were all sort of leaning the same way so they looked like they had all been there together mm -hmm. for a very long time. Yeah. And talking trees, let's go to the next slide and talk another very famous iconic tree on the side, on the grounds. This, this photograph uh, shows a how tree that until 2016 was standing and looking that well at the age of 129. Uh, but for me, as, as the architect, what I was trying to do in terms of residential scale, this is a restaurant called The House Without a Key, which in the middle, again, of high-rise urban Waikiki is strictly a one-story house. Mm -hmm. And again, the picture on the right we, we took together, this is what the hotel people very empathically say, you know, you, you were sharing the age of the tree and they said, you know, our tree got a little tired, mm -hmm. so it needed to rest and, and, it, and lay down. And it did. It and got it did. unrooted it, and it's on the side, but it's still, it's still alive. It's still green. That's right. right. And one of the things that I, I commented on was when you compare the house without a key today to what it was before, mm -hmm. the rebuilding moved it back considerably. So that gave a lot more space between it and the seawall for there to be space for people to sit and for performers, really yeah. increased the use of this beachside part. And that's also true for the extension of the building configuration. Let's go to the next slide because there's another restaurant with called the Orchid, mm -hmm. and that we see here, right, Ron? And you, you tell us why you placed it this way or why you kept it that way. Well, in this case, again, you see that uh, just as at the House Without a Key. The Orchids restaurant also had a view of Diamond Head. And then the nighttime gourmet restaurant, La Mer, is up on the second floor also with the view of Diamond Head. The, uh, I decided to extend the restaurant out from the face of the building, but in a way where it wouldn't look like it was necessarily new construction, but maybe something that had been added on over the years. And so it's just a cloth canopy. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, What's glorious about it is you do get, of course, light, uh, tropical light, uh, diffuse light coming through the canopy and uh, creating a really nice atmosphere for dining. And here you see a lawn with just interspersed with a few palm trees. Uh, several of those are actually original, mm -hmm. but the others are brand new. Mm -hmm. And here's a lawn that se separates the diners at Orchids from the tens of thousands of people who walk along the seawall every day. But I, I must say that in my mind, the seawall was a blessing because it brought uh, ocean uh, wave action right up to the Ahalaklani's property line. And then sometimes there are people who just kind of step over like they can walk right in. And there's a picture of some man doing that. Like these wild ones? The this natives, wild guy the wild that just, is, that just, yeah. just <laughs> climbing in over the wall. Well, this is actually, who took this picture? It wasn't me. I don't take selfies. I, I didn't take it. Presumably Ron took it. I confess that I was at the hotel uh, enjoying <laughs> uh, a, morning, uh, a morning repast, and some character uh, came by giving the shaka sign, uh -huh. and I turned around to take a shot, only to find out it was our friend Martin. And he was yelling at you in a German accent. You know, that gives me a chance to say I'm not just walking half naked there, but I'm also doing it inside. And the, their security, uh -huh. and they accept me. So I have to say, it's a, of course an elitist place because the rooms are $500 and yes. up. So it's not egalitarian what we usually care for. Mm -hmm. But we have to say it's not exclusive because otherwise you would be kept out, That's these right. bums, right? That's right. And so That's it's right. inclusive. It and is. they allow people, the general public, in its various ways, as you can mm -hmm. tell, to experience. So it's a very democratic place mm -hmm. and space. And let's go to the next slide, because I wouldn't have never done that if our uh, exotic escapism expert, Susanna, hadn't lured me in. Uh -huh. And she basically said, let's go inside. And I was a little hesitant. And I'm saying, that's not my clientele. And yeah. Not my, you yeah, know. yeah, not normal. But she yeah. basically did. And so uh, you always and often talk about your architecture and the places and, and settings as being a romantic thing, Ron. Can you dwell upon that a little bit? And you, by the way, thank 
you, you had us out for the orchid the other night, and Susanna was with us remotely on the phone. So that was a very romantic threesome evening. <laughs> sort of, yes. yes. <laughs> in a, in a, in a, well, then uh, don't misinterpret that. Don't misinterpret that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this photograph uh, shows a uh, leather blessing that this particular architect uh, had. And here's, here's someone uh, putting out the, the morning fresh flower arrangement. The fact is, uh, as architects, uh, we were responsible for creating a, uh, a suitable tropical setting for the, the guests and also to create the working environment for the employees. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that might have uh, attracted some discerning travelers for the first year, but it's only the incomparable service, food, and comforts that management and their, their employees provide that made this hotel a success. You know, talking, uh, are you comfortable to talk about the antis? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, sh I should mention that. Uh, one of the happiest moments I had uh, staying at the Holly Clooney, even before I knew I might be involved, was on Tuesday afternoons, every Tuesday afternoon, uh, at a restaurant, uh, I think it was called the Ha'ololi Room, in Lewer's house, all of the all of the uh, descendants, female descendants of Hawaiian royalty, gathered, and I gathered near them because it was so much fun. They, they were all there to talk story, to eat, and to drink quite a bit. Yeah. And you know, there, there's there's one there's one guy there who is, upon request, giving hotel guests a very special tour, and she knows all the details and always. You know, when she sees me, she talks about your client, Mr. Okura. So she knows in person. So I'm, I have to ask her if she's a niece of one of the aunties. Yeah, or if she knows the stories. That's yet to, yeah. yet to come. She's right? got to tell some stories. Exactly, yeah. storytelling. Yeah. So why don't we go into the living room, next slide. Yeah. And you show us around, Ron. Yeah, you, know, uh, you perhaps remember having seen just uh, a few minutes before what the living room for the hotel looked like back before our uh, redesign or re renovation of the Lewis house. And so again, it is a living room and a comfortable one, furnished only with comfortable furniture and a number of beautiful fresh uh, flower bouquets that are always changed each day. And over the two-story uh, wooden uh, fireplace mantle, and by the way, that fireplace is the only working fireplace in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. Uh, another blessing occurs in the sense that my Japanese client locally, the president of the Holly Clooney Corporation, was a bit of a Francophile, and he and his wife went to Paris, and uh, they found this rather odd and rather mesmerizing painting, not particularly Hawaiian, called After the Ball, and he uh, contributed it uh, to as a, as a piece of artwork on that uh, fireplace mantle. Somehow reminds me, and I wanted to put the picture in, but you go back to the show of the Kahala Apartments and the very famous paintings there. Oh, that's true. That's There's sort true. of the same kind of notion that's to be right. a little bit of a provocateur okay. using the French, right? Okay. The term all right. of okay. all that shaking things this up. Might be the place, this, this might be the place to jump in and, and talk about the fact that I was blessed even before the construction started. Uh, the client wanted us be their architect, and I was working for Edward Killingsworth, first of all, because they loved the Kahala Hilton, the original yeah. Kahala mm -hmm. Hilton. And second, when they bought the property, they also bought the nearly completed working drawings that we already had for the previous client, mm -hmm. which was the Weyerhaeuser Lumber Company of Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the client asked us to come out, uh, have someone come out, and uh, so that we could introduce ourselves and we would have a personal relationship. So Ed Killingsworth and I flew out. Uh, we immediately had uh, some fine times and, and uh, were wined and dined and were pretty well convinced that we were going to get this project. But then they threw us a curve. We had a command performance to meet with the chairman emeritus of the entire Okura Hotel Corporation, mm -hmm. which is the father corporation of the Holly Colony. So Ed and I were really nervous about this because even though he had sort of a symbolic position, he also had tremendous influence in decision-making about anything to do with mm. hotels. So we went in to meet him with some trepidation. So, uh, and we were by ourselves with this gentleman. He turned out to be a very elegant man, almost in his 90s, 
we spoke perfect English because in his younger days, he ran uh, hotels in New York City. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, we got acquainted, and things seemed to be going well. All of a sudden, he drew us a curve because he said, uh, do you uh, know much about uh, Japanese literature? And if you do, what's your, your favorite Japanese novel? Well, before Ed jumped in, I chimed in, well, that would be uh, Snow Country by Yazunari Kawabata. Wow. Well, the, chairman's, the chairman just beamed, and he grinned from ear to ear because he said then, you know, he's one of my best friends ever since <laughs> college days. They went to school an, an with each other, right? Coincidence. <laughs> and, uh, an, an amazing coincidence and a blessing, but more of a blessing than you think because the fact is, that's the only Japanese novel I've ever read. Well, there you go. Well, you, that's, that, it was meant to be. It was obviously meant to be. And may, Indeed. May, and maybe we also want to share, because we were talking, let's go back even more. There was a pre-design for the hotel by one of the other great soon-to-become hospitality design tycoons, Pete Wimberley, right? Oh. You want to chip that anecdote in really quick, uh, Ron? Yeah. Yes, uh, the, the client showed us uh, what uh, a scheme that they had, had looked at, indeed. Uh, and it was, it was very simple, and it's, in its simplicity, it was very compelling in the sense that it was another tower, the same height, 300 feet as the Sheraton Tower. But what made it so amazing was uh, all around the uh, tower, completely filling up all of the Halaklani property, was the most amazing water park I've ever seen or imagined. Waterfalls, slides, and lazy rivers beyond with inner tubes, and uh, uh, swans on lakes, and uh, a place to dive in uh, it was scuba equipment and look at reef fish. It, you know, it, it could have been a great success in its sense. It just wasn't what the client had in mind. Well, I'm glad you guys won out and did what you did versus the Wimberley watery fantasy let me put it that way wet design was the firm the landscape or the water uh -huh. uh, design would have done company, it yes. right? okay all right so um we're, we're actually running out of time which is actually not a problem because no. we, we had intended to make this two shows but now we decided spontaneously we're going to make it three shows we are going to have to make too, it three shows this is too when we want to because right. this is too exciting yes and you guys watching probably well, wonder when do we see the architecture right because we only have seen yeah uh, places and and stories and that's actually the way you actually experience the hotel so yes, we're going totally, to tantalize you we're going to tease you exactly Teasing you, yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah, get you yeah. more and more excited. And I promise to be back again for the next two weeks. You, it's really you better. It's a pleasure to join you for you better for a conversation on both the whole social history and the design history of this place. Great. We can't wait, and you guys all as well. And until then, please very stay very tropically, exotically, romantically Waikikian Halikulani Lee. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>